good thing. But how far does that go? The Saudis will just say that all their actions in Yemen are defensive. Well, Mehdi, it's a big win for the activists around the country that you have an American president saying we're going to end this war and not provide intelligence support to the Saudis, not provide any support for the Saudi bombing campaign. Here's the important point, Mehdi. It's the Congress and the United States that gets to decide what an offensive campaign is. So if the Saudis come and say they're going to bomb some Yemeni's village because they fear that that's a threat to them, we're going to say no way. And you and my word that this Congress is going to make sure that the Saudis don't get away with that. Well, that's good to hear. Tonight, it's being reported that the Biden administration is reversing Trump's last-minute uh, designation of the Houthi rebels in Yemen as a foreign terrorist organization, which many argue impacted on the humanitarian situation on the ground. Uh, what do you say to hawks in D.C., in Tel Aviv, in Riyadh, who say, this is Biden being soft on Iran because Iran backs the Houthis? I say, look at Trump's policy on Iran. Can we have a fact-based uh, assessment? Uh, when Donald Trump took office, Iran had 100 kilograms of enriched uranium. When he left, they had 2.5 trillion enriched uranium, 25 times more. So Trump's maximum pressure campaign, Trump's uh, designation against the Houthis, did absolutely nothing to deter the Iranians. What this is about is allowing food and medicine and commercial activity into the Yemenis. And we have Robert Malley now to get us back into the Iranian agreement, which is going to finally deter the Iranian nuclear expansion. Yes, and Robert Malley was someone the Hawks didn't like either, but Biden went ahead and appointed him. Kudos uh, to the president. Let's talk about the Iran nuclear deal, the JCPOA. Getting back into that deal feels kind of like a game of geopolitical chicken right now, because Biden says... Iran has to do it first, comply with the terms, then America will join. Iran says, hold on, you guys pulled out first, you get back in first, then we'll join. It feels like a rather good deal uh, is being held off uh, because of this pointless you first, you first. Why can't they just join together at the same time? I agree with you. Well, we should get rid of the Trump sanctions. And here's the point. If Iran doesn't comply, uh, we can always snap them right back. So there's no loss in uh, removing those sanctions and having Iran comply. Iran, otherwise, is going to continue to build the nuclear capacity. And so at some point, data has to matter. This is not just a matter of opinion. Iran developed the greatest uranium enrichment during the Trump administration. It's not just that the maximum campaign was morally bad. It was a blunder, a strategic blunder. Let's yes. lift the sanctions, have them back in. And that's the best way to, to uh, curb their nuclear uh, uh, ambition. Yes, uh, Trump's strategic blunders fills up a lot of pages. Uh, a lot of the problems in the Middle East, Congressman, revolve around three countries, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Iran, two of them allies, one of them an adversary. Do you see Biden radically resetting relations with any of them? I think he's going to radically reset relations with all of them. He's going to make it clear uh, to the Saudis uh, that uh, the offensive war in Yemen is going to end and that they're uh, uh, tactics of human rights abuses are not going to be tolerated. They have to reset their priorities to have a relationship with the United States. With Iran, uh, he's going to make it clear that they have to comply with the JCPOA and inspections. They can't have nuclear ambitions, but that we want to reset that relationship. And with Israel, he's going to make it clear that Israel is an ally. It always has been an ally of the United States, but they have to recognize Palestinian statehood. They can't be having new settlements. They can't be burning down Palestinian villages. Human rights are going to matter. We're going to have a human rights focused foreign policy. I hope so, Congressman. I really do hope so. But we're out of time there. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Congressman Rokana, for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you.